I'm going to breeze through this because I'm trying to fit 46 years. Kevin, come on up here, please. Um, I'm trying to fit 46 years into 40 minutes, so there's time for questions. So if I sound out of breath and crazy, it's because I'm trying to jam all this in. So first of all, uh, how many first-timers here at Expo? All right, all right. And how many people have not seen one of my presentations before? Oh, okay. Rob was right. Rob always says, hey, there's going to be people that have never heard you talk before, so make sure, you know, you, you cover everything you can. And it's like, okay, I'm going to try. So here we go. Um, I do have notes, and I do have a presentation, but uh, let's, let's see where this goes. Let me do some introductions. Uh, the beginning of my career, 1978, I met this guy, Kevin O'Connor, down at the end. And uh, he, was, he was working with me at a point of purchase advertising place for six months. He was there for only six months. And I, he said, I'm going to Bally Manufacturing to be an in-house illustrator. I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. So um, he gets there. Six months later, he calls me and says, uh, they're going to be hiring another guy. Are you interested? I said, yeah. And he goes, get a portfolio together and let me see it first. So um, he's playing in a band at a club out in the burbs, and I go to this job where he's playing, and we go into a waitress station, and I get out, like, my stuff, and he's like, yeah, that's cool, that's good. Don't show him that one. Don't, don't show him that one. W work on this one a little bit, and uh, yeah, good. So he, he gets me this interview with Paul Ferris, the art director, and... Uh, I guess the rest is history because there it was. So that guy right there was instrumental in getting me into this business, and we've been working very closely together all these years. So thank you, Kevin. I, I actually felt sorry for Greg because, well, I found out he was a, a Linda Ronstadt fan, so <laughs> I, I had to save him uh, from Linda Ronstadt by forcing rockabilly down his throat. So. <laughs> and thank you for that. Um, who, who else should I talk about here? Oh, Jeremy. This guy, Zombie Yeti. So, you know, I've, I've taken great pride in my career of finding the right people. And um, there's, you know, there's a few of them. And, uh, and J Jeremy is one of those guys. It's like, uh, when we saw the Papa Duke stuff he was doing, uh, we were all trying to figure out, man, this, this guy, where'd he come from, and how, how do we get a hold of him? So um, we did get a hold of him, and again, the rest is history. He's been with Stern uh, for a number of years now, and uh, he does obviously amazing work. Um, so I want to thank him for not only you know being a fantastic artist, but also a guy that uh, can talk and listen and talk and listen and talk and listen. And um, you know we have we have great phone conversations that I uh, you know I have time for now. <laughs> well, all I'll say to this is Linda Ronstadt. Really, I didn't. <laughs> I, had I known, things would be much different. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, um, no Gre Greg is the reason I'm here, uh, you know, in this industry, uh, first and foremost. And, and um, Greg's always been great to me. And, and he's uh, been very – I've had a lot of creative directors I've worked with over the years. And, and uh, he's somehow the only one who's managed to allow me to – really kind of flourish so i appreciate everything oh thanks uh we um greg and i at the first studio that we worked at together we were next to each other i think we had and yeah, then back on, back. on one side was bill and the yeah. other other side was bob, bob. yep and they and they would talk over us uh, in our cubicles so all day long and be oh bill uh uh, yeah, what is it, Bob? And it, and it just went on like that all day. So, I don't know. In the end, we became Bill and Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we are now. Um, <laughs> one person that couldn't be here tonight because he's not feeling well is Stephen Martin, uh, not related to Steve Martin. Um, but I hired him in, uh, just after I started at uh, 
at Stern, whoa, and um, he uh, came on board to be the production art manager. And um, I, I've had one of those in the past, and his name was Paul Barker uh, at Williams. And in my mind, I needed to find another Paul Barker. And in Stephen, I, I, I got pretty damn close. Stephen is a, uh, a bloodhound. He goes after stuff. He gets stuff done. And I appreciate everything that Stephen does. And it's kind of like an unseen uh, amount of work that people don't realize. You know, it takes, I want to get across, it takes a team, not just the whole team to create a game, but just to create the artwork. It does take a team. Uh, and there's a team leader, and, there, and there's people that do behind the scenes production work that need to be called out, and Stephen Martin is that guy. So um, he couldn't be here tonight, but um, I wanna say thanks to Steve for uh, being a great employee and a great artist. Um, and now, this came up at an early one, uh, earlier uh, conference here. Uh, somebody asked, you know, how are you gonna replace these people that are, you know, aging out, like uh, Greg Freries, uh, and, uh, and so um, Gary answered the question, well, uh, we've already got Sebastian to take uh, Greg's place, so I want to take this opportunity to introduce Sebastian Napoli uh, as my replacement at Stern Pinball, and uh, Sebastian uh, comes to us from the art direction world. He's been working in, uh, he can probably tell you himself, but he's been working in the advertising game for years. And uh, he, the, the more interesting part of his background is he, he is a, he was a graffiti writer. <laughs> so uh, I, I find that pretty cool uh, that this guy put his life on the line to create artwork on walls and various substrates. So um, uh, my, my daughter said, well, wh who are you gonna hire? I said, well, I found this guy, Sebastian Napoli. She goes, and who is he? And I said, he, he's an art director that came from the average side. And she goes, no, 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 who is he? What is his sign? <laughs> and I said, uh, let me check. So I said, hey, do you know, and he's, you're an Aries, right? <laughs> yeah. He is an Aries. I don't know anything about that. So I call her up. I say, he's an Aries. Ooh, feisty. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, good. That's exactly what we need. So um, this is Sebastian Napoli. Welcome to Stern Pinball. Welcome to Pinball. Thank you. Hey, thank you a lot, Todd. I, no, it's been, it's been amazing. It, it's it's been I mean from this the first interview I had with Greg, uh, we just I just hit it off with him incredibly well. Um, yeah, I was a graph writer in Chicago, um, did a lot of graffiti, but it was also because um, I was an artist. I wasn't a jock, and I just didn't know where I kind of fit in. And that was that was a really awesome place for me where I was able to uh, do artwork and and uh, have a group of friends and just get out there and really really experience life. But when I met Greg, you know, my I, I I've had you know, obviously a, a love for all different types of art from from R. Crumb to Frank Frazetta, and 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 when I speaking to Greg and after he said he did the Elvira pinball machine, immediately I was just completely you know enamored with him as a person and what he had to say, and I, I think we hit it off right off the bat. So thank you Absolutely. too to Greg for you know kind of bringing me in. So nice to be here, guys. All right. Uh, oh, the the one thing I will say about uh, Sebastian, and I and I think this speaks to Greg's, because Greg, when he was looking for, you know, Greg would run by, you know, different people he was he was talking with and everything else, and and because uh, he was thoughtful, because he knew I had to work with him, and uh, uh, I thought that was nice and <laughs> not necessary. But uh, the one thing uh, I will say uh, about Sebastian, and and Greg was right about uh, him in this regard, is. Um, he will answer to new Greg. So <laughs> it's, it's much easier for me to go, okay, new Greg, wait a minute. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, by the way. Ouch. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> by the way, uh, he's my boss. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and Jeremy is, I think we've, we've kicked it off incredibly well. 
So yeah. those conversations that Greg used to have inside of the storm shelter office, I'm now having with Jeremy on, you know, every single day. So right. yeah, but the the good the cool thing is, uh, they're they're way less appropriate most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. We. Uh, uh, you know, I, I broke this up into segments, so my career is broken up into segments, all about a decade long each. So there's Bally Manufacturing, right? And uh, that's where I got my start. Uh, I call it Bally High because, you know, that's where I was learning, learning my chops, learning, learning how to be an illustrator uh, on company dime. And uh, did I say dime? Yes, I did. Um, and it, it, was, it was a great experience. Um, we listened to WXRT in the art department every day, and I just heard this morning uh, they they chose 1978 this morning to be like their thing. They were playing all music from 1978, so I thought that was kind of weird. But anyway, um, the, after so yeah, so it went from Bally Pinball to Bally Midway. Um, which kind of expanded things. We started getting involved more in the video game business uh, because the video game business was winning. You've heard this story before. So um, we, uh, we, we, you know, I had that segment, and then that kind of uh, went downhill uh, until Williams bought us, and I got sold with the furniture. I think I mentioned that yesterday. And, uh, you know, so I was at Williams, and that was, that was Blossom, you know. I mean, that was the 90s Blossom of pinball uh, and, and, you know, the other side of the roller coaster, too. Um, and then the, uh, I went to Midway Games, and I did video game, uh, home console games for seven or eight years. I was, that was my fish out of water period. I didn't know video games from anything, and I had to go home and play video games to understand what we were working on. First person shooter games was totally foreign to me, but I was an art manager there, and I did the best I could, and it was, uh, it was another learning experience. Then the Great Recession hit, and uh, I was unemployed because Midway went bankrupt. Uh, so I spent about four to five years trying to figure out what was next. I had two daughters in college, to p and I was paying for that. Uh, so it was tricky to work at like below poverty level wages as an as a freelancer uh, and try to you know balance everything else. Uh, that's when Dennis and I came up with Wonelli uh, to to kind of you know figure out how to get our faces back in the pinball industry, even though pinball hadn't started this climb yet again. Uh, so we, um, I ended up, you know, Dennis went to work for Jersey Jack, and then he convinced Jer Jersey Jack to hire me to do the play field for Wizard of Oz while we were working on Monelli. And it was just like, you know, it was cool to be at the startup of uh, Jersey Jack. Uh, I got through Wizard of Oz. I said, hey, Jack, are we ready to go here? I'm, I'm ready to stay. And Jack was like, well, I don't know. And George calls me. There he is. And he goes, hey, what are you doing over there? Come play on this side of the fence for a while. So um, that's what happened. Went to work for Stern in 2012, and I finished, finished my career there in July of this year. And that's kind of the it in a nutshell. So we'll start the slideshow here. Um, I'm still looking at my notes, sorry. I, I did these notes during other people's presentations. Um, so. I noticed. Yeah, did you? Um, where am I, here we go. All right, so there's a, there's a pinography, uh, uh, kind of, and not everything's here. There's, there's probably pieces missing from this, but this, this kind of sums up uh, things that I've been involved with, uh, and you know, you look at, the internet isn't always right about everything, so a lot of people think that I did um, Monster Bash. I did not do Monster Bash. I the internet says I did, and thank you, I would have loved to do Monster Bash, but Kevin O'Connor did Monster Bash. Um, but Kevin O'Connor also filled in with, with inking for me. Back when we were doing traditional artwork, um, Kevin would come swoop in as a freelancer 
and actually ink my play fields for me um, and for other people too. Um, and, and that was a great help because we had a, an established uh, you know, way of doing things when we were putting all that artwork together back at uh, Valley, Valley Williams or Williams Valley, whatever, whatever it was called. So sorry, I'm kind of, kind of m m trying to move as quickly as I can here. So I'm just gonna go through these slides. My very first painting that I did for Williams, uh, for Valley, I'm sorry, was uh, Skateball. Um, and it got shelved, the game didn't get made right away. And then later on it got made, but I was on a different project. So Kevin and Margaret and Pat McMahon all helped out to get Skateball uh, together. So I only did the backlash for Skateball. Um, and you know, if, if I can get any input from you guys at all, if you guys got questions up here, um, Jeremy and, and Sebastian, just you know, barge in whenever you want to uh, for, for comedy's sake. Um, Harlem Globetrotters was the first game that I worked on that was produced, uh, actually made it all the way through. Hot Doggin', uh, Rolling Stones, uh, the internet. Somebody on uh, Facebook the other day said, uh, oh yeah, that first Bally Rolling Stones. Uh, yeah, that's Cadaver Mick. I'm like, all right, I, I can see that. Yeah, it does look like Cadaver Mick. So, um, but I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So there. <laughs> Anyway. Don't forget we had our own Mick Jagger, too, right in the studio. He That's right. I, I didn't include that picture, though. We did make a, a Mick Jagger when they were in town for the 81 tour. Um, we did a, make our own uh, Mick Jagger. It, it was a pole with lips on the top. Yeah. And I think we put some stick arms that went like this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. that I forgot about that. And he, he stayed there for like two years. <laughs> yeah. What? No Linda Ronstadt? Oh, jeez. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Frontier. Oh, by the way, Frontier is uh, Keith Elwin's fair game with my artwork on it. So for what that's worth. Um, I was like, really? Frontier? He goes, yeah, that, that game kicks your ass. And it taught me how to be a better player. Uh, Fathom also kicks a lot of people's ass. And uh, I, d I did that game as well. Uh, very proud of that game. Uh, a lot of art direction from Paul Ferris, which I'm grateful for. Um, but, uh, you know, as a 25-year-old guy just, you know, learning, I was like, you know, this, this is a lot of work and this is, uh, this is the best I can do right now. But uh, I've learned. I've learned over the years. Uh, Vector, uh, Greg Kamik game, first game that was kind of a team effort. Um, it was an experiment. Because before that, it was like the game designer did a white wood. It came to the art department. Uh, can we call these lights this or you know whatever the theme was going to be? So it was a lot different world back then uh, of how game design progressed to the art department and beyond. Uh, speakeasy, uh, George Christian game. Uh, my favorite anecdote from this game was George Christen came to me and he goes, uh, Greg, uh, I don't understand. Uh, you, you don't have any happy colors on this play field. And I said, well, it's from 1921, so, you know, uh, the, the, fade, the colors have faded. Uh, BMX was supposed to be, uh, I think it was supposed to be uh, E.T., um, but we never, something happened with the license, I'm not sure what it was, but those are my nephews on the back glass, and they are now in their 50s. <laughs> this is, uh, that's Doug Watson, actually, uh, but that's my artwork uh, with Doug w Watson as the poser, um, and uh, that wasn't meant to be a, that, that was, yeah, so, <laughs> um, so there, there is a Black Pyramid, uh, there's the cabinet. Uh, hot shots. I don't even know if this thing made saw the light of day, but it was pool balls with flippers, and it was very strange, but um, I'm not sure where that went, if anywhere. Lady Luck, uh, my Patrick Nagel homage. Uh, strange Science, um, that was Dan Langloy, and had a lot of fun on that. Black Belt, Karate Fight, same game, I think. Germany wanted to rename it to Karate Fight. So, because uh, I don't know, maybe 
maybe nobody achieves black belts in uh, uh, Germany, I'm not sure. Um, hard body. So when Sebastian started, he goes, what's your favorite game that you've ever worked on? <laughs> and I said, I don't have a favorite game because they're like my children. I said, but I have one unfavorite game, <laughs> and this is it. And he said, well, I, w I gotta see that. So I showed it to him, and he was stunned by the beauty of the 1980s vibe. So I went home and pulled a translate out of my stash and uh, made sure that uh, uh, I gave him an autographed copy. So he, he now proudly has a hard body autographed copy. I, I'm actually working on an, I'm working on an alt translate just for you <laughs> of that one. I just never there was a cult classic. <laughs> and then I was really shocked to go on Instagram and see how many people have done photo shoots around that game, <laughs> just sort of, you know what I mean, showing it off. Um, Blackwater 100, the first time I worked with Dennis, more or less, and uh, I did the play field art. Tony Ramoni did the rest of it. Uh, Escape from the Lost World, another Langlois project, one of the weirdest play fields ever, but um, it's kind of a unique game for sure. Uh, truck stop, play field only. Pat McMahon did the rest of this. Um, I can't take credit for um, the size of anything, um, <laughs> but I can take credit for the size of some of this. But uh, this was the first uh, foray with uh, Cassandra Peterson for Elvira. Um, Roger told a great story the other day, and I'm, uh, I was happy to hear that story that we, we got a lot of the artwork done before she approved it. So that's a cool thing. Uh, Dr. Dude, uh, he also talked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I, <laughs> I was the one that told Dennis, really, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You sure you want to do that? Uh, and w I said, why don't we do our own comic book? And he's like, like what? I said, like, uh, I don't know. He goes, how about Dr. Doom? I said, no, that, that's already a comic book. Uh, we can't do that guy. Um, I said, but how about Dr. Dude? So um, that's, that's how that came about. Uh, in the 80s, uh, Jonathan Brandmeier was a big uh, you know, radio personality here in Chicago. And um, he wanted his own pinball machine for his transition to television. And so I, I, we sold them, uh, Valley sold him a uh, or Williams sold him a Dr. Uh, Dr. Dude, and then I did a backlash uh, called Dr. Johnny Loved Art. So that's what that's all about. Uh, party Zone, we took the party out to the uh, you know extreme on this one, and glad to hear that uh, there are some fans of Party Zone out there. Uh, I ran into a couple at this show, and uh, it's really heartening to hear because it's bizarre. What a shh. For those of you who didn't know, um, I, des I helped design the Whitewater Topper. Uh, I also sat with Dennis and ideated on playfield ideas and features and stuff like that. Uh, he did the heavy lifting, but um, I always love to work with uh, the design uh, closely, and uh, Dennis and I always worked well together with that stuff. And then came Steve Ritchie, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, I think I've told this story before, but for the newcomers, uh, Steve uh, asked me, "Hey, I want to I want to work with you on your next on the, my next project, uh, but you you can't do any funny stuff." And I said, well, "What do you mean? What, what what is the theme?" He goes, "Star Trek: The Next Generation." I said, "Yeah, there's no funny stuff in that." <laughs> so um, we he he ended up working with me, uh, you know. Uh, and we worked together on a, two projects, no fear. And this one is more of like he and I, you know, we're opposite personalities, right? Um, and and he's aggressive. I'm I'm kind of more laid back, more or less. And so he is the skull boy, uh, the voiceover, and I'm the announcer that, that is worried about what's going to happen if we do this. So um, it it kind of was fitting. For, for our personalities to come together on that. Scared Stiff, the second uh, iteration of Elvira, um, 
I, really one of my favorites, uh, just fun to work on. Uh, I worked with Brian on Medieval Madness. I art directed heavily uh, John Yossi. John Yossi is a peach to work with, and uh, he took my direction and uh, what I call Yossified it, and uh, I was, you know, more than pleased with uh, the results of what he can do. Uh, I did the play field art for that too, uh, but these, this is like a, a pencil uh, marker comp of the cabinet before I gave it to uh, Yossi, and there's a shot of the play field. Um, Revenge from Mars, we had a similar relationship. He helped me out with, uh, you know, I did some, um, you know, I, by the way, I stole a lot of these off the internet, so this is a little uh, out of focus. Sorry about that, but uh, that's Revenge from Mars, and that was a unique project. I wish I could get into more of that, but uh, I loved working on it. But the large Martian is stepping on an Edsel, and that's because I overheard Neil Nicastro, our CEO, tell a distributor this, could, this game could revolutionize pinball, or it could be the next Edsel. So I put the Martian crushing an Edsel on the back glass. And then we got in trouble uh, for Woe Nelly. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the fact that we did Woe Nelly, and I'm sorry if there's anybody out there that was offended by this game, but uh, it was just a game about farming. I keep saying that, and I will say that. There is one young lady here that asked about uh, uh, a f more female-centric version of this game. Um, for for the ladies, and uh, so we're 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 still discussing that. Um, but there's me uh, with the first play field in hand. Um, there's the first three hand-built Wonellies we built in Dennis's garage, uh, and and see, it's a game of uh, it's about farming. That's all it's about, guys, ladies, everybody. Um, so there it is. Uh, there's the truck too. Um, and then we get back to Elvira. Uh, the, uh, I, we always wanted to do a third Elvira, and we were lucky to do the second Elvira. And uh, with the advent of the screen graphics that we have now at Stern, um, I don't know who convinced Gary that Elvira was a good idea, but I'm glad they did. Uh, and I thank Jody for going after it. And it came together beautifully, and uh, uh, working with Lyman was awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'm, that's as far as I'm going to take that because uh, I'll start crying. Um, it's about design freedom and process. So uh, one of the things about pinball and pinball design is we, we are allowed to do many things. Um, and and I, I, I can't state that enough. We're, we're, we're given some, you know, limits, but for the most part, the creative process is wide open, and, and that's, the, that's one of the greatest things about working in this business. Um, so this is like a first sketch of Dr. Dude when uh, he had a swirly haircut, um, and, uh, you know, it, I, I took it from there and made it better. Um, you know, back in the day, we did things by hand. Uh, we hand-painted stuff, and sometimes you'd get a brush stuck in a nostril. You know, I don't know how it happened, but it did. Uh, we we did we did things like we tried to convince people that we worked with that Elvira was a good idea for a second version, and so w I put together these skulls with candy inside that the candy came inside a brain. So they opened up the package, and inside the skull was a brain, and inside that was a note that said, "Hey, this is going to be a good idea. You got to trust us." Uh, Vector. Uh, this is actually acrylic uh, cut and then lit. Uh, so uh, once I designed the logo, we took a piece of acrylic, I had the model shop cut it, and then we bottom lit it and, and side lit it. And, uh, you know, so a lot of freedom. Uh, Captain Bizarre, uh, another head on a play field. Yeah, I know. But um, we wanted to give him personality. And the guy on the right is Captain Bizarre after years of labor. Um, so he got beat up pretty bad. Uh, I just took that picture a few years ago. Um, this is Bigfoot from Whitewater before he had his toupee. 
Um, so here, here's another example of, hey, we want to do a character with ha actual hair. You know, how, c how can we do Bigfoot without hair? And we did it. We were, we were allowed to do that. You know, I don't know how that lasted through the years. Maybe that hair is shedding by now, but there he is. Um, uh, here's five deadheads from Elvira House of Horrors. Oh, but you say there's only a skull in that. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> we, uh, you know, Dennis did these beautiful cardboard uh, uh, mock-ups of the of the house. The, the we had we had to learn to change things and move things around a little bit. So, you know, he did another version of it, and then I decorated that with. Uh, and here's a here's a first version of uh, House of Horrors Playfield with some of the things that Dennis wanted that didn't stick around. Um, but we were able to still create a, a fun and exciting game, uh, you know, through it all. This is a piece I did uh, when I was uh, um, getting the job at Bally. And uh, you can see pieces of it became, um, you know, skate ball. But uh, th this was a, a piece I did. Uh, when Paul Ferris said, okay, I want to hire you, but I want to see more work. Do, do a pinball back class and come back in a week. And I said, okay, what's the theme? He says, it's up to you. So that's, that's what that's all about. So there you go. That's, that kind of became skateball. Uh, behind the scenes art progression. Uh, this is back when everything was hand done. So uh, do, do a color comp. I do a tight pencil underdrawing on the illustration board and then work on top of that with, uh, you know, to make sure all the likenesses were spot on. Um, this is a Langlois rough sketch on the left for Escape from the Lost World. And then he said, could you make this better? And so I tried. Uh, Medieval Madness, fun stuff. There's the sculpt of the castle. Um, Dr. Dude. Uh, just some, you know, sculpts happening in progress. Uh, here's an interesting array of pictures. Uh, Jerry Pinsler did a lot of our sculpts back in the day, and this is Steve Ritchie overseeing the first fit of the Borg ship on Star Trek The Next Generation. And, uh, and Jerry is, uh, you know, having some prayers said that this thing fits properly um, before, uh, we, you know, so, so that we can move forward. Uh, otherwise, he'd have to go back and start from scratch. Um, some behind the scenes stuff of deadheads that got, uh, you know, costed out of the game. Um, this is a Mysterian. It's a mystery. We, we never made this game. Uh, never made Harley Davidson with Steve Ritchie. Uh, never made slot shot with Dan Langlois. Uh, this is uh, this is a group of pictures that uh, I put together. Uh, just a bunch of people at work doing their job. Um, so a lot of these are called funny pictures that we'd use as reference when we draw. So we'd take a Polaroid camera, shoot a picture, and go, oh, OK, thanks. I pointed to Doug Watson earlier on Black Pyramid. He got up on a table, and I got a good angle. And he he held the thing, and it was it was all it all worked for us back then. Um, this <laughs> this is uh, Pat McMahon and Kevin O'Connor discussing the finer points of Irish pride. Uh, Dennis, uh, I don't know what this was for, uh, but that's Dennis uh, posing for something. Uh, this is Paul Barker. I mentioned his name earlier. One of the hardest working guys in the art department. Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott did a few games for Williams. Uh, people don't often get to see Tim, but there he is. Uh, this is, uh, you know, another brush with greatness here. Cassandra Peterson and the art crew. Um, like I said, it takes it takes a, a group, a whole team of people to put this stuff together. Here's Mark Wayna and Dennis uh, thinking that you know this signed playfield by Elvira is both theirs, and she's referring to them as geeks. Um, and there, look at that, Bob Denver, Gilligan, and Matt Graney, you know. And Kevin O'Connor, at the same trade show, had the Simpsons game on the opposite side of the field there. So 
uh, Dr. Dude against, uh, against uh, the Simpsons. Uh, there's Dr. Dude, there's Party Zone, um, how we doing on time, I feel like I'm rushing like crazy here. Uh, Blackwater 100. So here, this is a very interesting picture. Uh, this is at a trade show, and this is when Blackwater was, uh, you know, debuted. And you got Larry DeMar, you got Dennis, you got Claude, you got Joe Kamikow, you got Steve Ritchie, you got Ed Boone, you got Pat Lawler, and I don't know who that is. I put probably a programmer. But uh, Blackwater did capture some attention from the industry, and there it is, its booth. Uh, these are other funny pictures. Uh, you know, obviously P Jim Patla and Dennis Nordman became part of the Elvira and the Party Monsters. There's Doug. How about that? Um, that worked. Uh, Tony Ramone uh, is posing for his own stuff on uh, Special Force, Dennis Nordman's first game. Uh, there's a hand. I needed a good hand. There's me with uh, my fro. And uh, obviously the fro didn't fit under the hat, so Margaret got somebody else to take that role. Uh, Kevin O'Connor on Mystic, but we learned today that the original theme had magic in it, right? Yep. Um, Strange Science, uh, I am both the monkey and the doctor. I built this helmet for Strange Science. So um, there's uh, No Fear, I am the eyeballs of No Fear. Uh, speakeasy, some funny pictures. Yep, yeah, we did use that helmet. There it is. Uh, Fathom, there's uh, Overweight Me with uh, the painting. Um, yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm not that good of a skier, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, here's a, here, a, a nice truck stood still long enough so that we could get something for Pat to work on Ramp Warrior. But really, it's all about the people. The people are the most important part of this industry. And, and it, you know. <laughs> How dare you? That was a candid Perhaps photo. I'm going to let this sit there for a while. <laughs> can, can I just say one thing, Greg, after, after looking at all those photos of you? What happened uh, to, to make you stop smiling? Because it, you were smiling in all those. <laughs> you looked really happy. I don't know. I can't answer that. I can't. But isn't this a lovely picture, everybody? I love that one. It's, it was, it's only missing you, Greg. There's John Yowsey, um, one of the hardest working guys in pinball. Uh, does amazing work, has always done amazing work. Uh, here's a few guys that you might know. I'm going to show a lot of pictures of people, and I'm not going to use names because I'm ev eventually going to forget somebody's name, and I don't want to do that. So, but you're you're just going to see a lot of people that helped out and worked together, and and we it, it is it's it's the best fraternity to be a part of. Um, you know, I remember bringing Franchi into his first expo, and he was like a meek little guy um, that. Did I say little? Um, he was he was smaller at that time, but uh, he came in. He was shorter, and uh, he he came in and he didn't know anybody. He didn't know the industry, and now he's you know the talk of the town. So uh, he's he's one of our favorites. Um, you know these are just strange pictures. We worked a lot together, and we had fun, and we get we get to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and then we retire and people come out and have fun with my head. Uh, by the way, w w if we get to doing uh, answers to your questions, uh, we do have prizes so if you want them. Uh, you don't have to take them. Um, this, this is classic. So this is Pat McMahon at his finest. And uh, when, when Steve left the pinball industry to go back to Atari to do video games, the people out at Atari heard that we had a style guide for Steve Ritchie, and they wanted that style guide real bad. <laughs> so we sent them the style guide, and uh, but there, there's a lot of little notes on here that are classic, and uh, it, that that has become 
the uh, the iconic Steve Ritchie uh, drawing that we all know and love. And there he is, uh, you know. So um, there's Steve Ritchie as a cop and Python and Mark Ritchie uh, at the AMIS show with Elvira. Uh, there's Dennis with his broken leg. He almost killed himself, but the you know he's he's resilient. Uh, Roger Sharp, Jim Patla. Uh, oh yeah, I wasn't gonna say any names because uh, I'll forget some. So I'm not gonna say any names on this one. But that that's the whole Elvira and the Party Monsters theme, the team, not theme, team. Uh, that's me and Mark Panacho beneath the costumes. Uh, there's there's another good shot of the team on Scared Stiff. Uh, there's a good shot of, of Cassandra actually playing the game. Um, hey, look at that. Gary's playing Elvira. There he is. And there he is again. <laughs> so that Gary's uh, standee is my handiwork. Uh, when I first started at Stern, I don't know if he asked for it, but I did it. And uh, it's, it's you know become iconic now, so that's nice. Nice to hear. Uh, some of my favorite people right there. Uh, look at these guys. There's that's Randy, by the way, if you didn't know, Randy Martinez. No names. Oh, right, right. <laughs> no, here's okay. No names. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, go. <laughs> that's that's me when my hair was longer and and actually had a color. Um, that's the art department, man. It was you know, I, I have a look on my face there that. I could have been up to something, but uh, I think everybody else was up to something. <laughs> There's Paul Ferris on the left. Oh, no names. There's Paul Ferris in the middle. Kevin O'Connor. Uh, Billy O'Donnell on the right. Tom Neiman on the left. Look at that. Here's an interesting picture. This was when uh, the Midway building got, uh, just before it got torn down. So this is a group of Midway employees that went back to Chicago to uh, actually take chunks out of the building with a sledgehammer. So that was interesting, interesting day. There's Gomez, uh, you know, <laughs> saying goodbye to the building. Um, there's me and Batman. There's that Bob Denver again. Uh, Bob Stevlick, this, this is a Bob segment. Bob Stevlick did Game of Thrones and Star Wars. Uh, this Johnny Crap. This is an interesting picture of, of, of uh, yeah, J Dave Peterson. This is the craziest picture of Dave I've ever taken. So <laughs> I think it's the only one I've ever taken. <laughs> These are folks that work behind the scenes at, at Stern. Um, you know that guy, he's a Hall of Famer now. Uh, Steve Martin, uh, Stephen Martin, sorry. Um, couldn't be here tonight. Tom Copera, no names. We know this guy. Miss him greatly. So these are, you know, people that work behind the scenes doing great work on the screen graphics. Um, you know, and, and you know, they, they don't get the recognition they need. Um, so... Uh, we're just, you know, it, it's, it literally is one of the greatest fraternities or whatever you want to call it to be associated with, um, you know, and, and oh, here's uh, George teaching Steve Ritchie exactly how dragons fly. <laughs> no, Steve, this is how they fly. And here's Dennis Norman taking a nap while Ken Walker explains the finer points of uh, electromechanical games. Um, there's uh, there's JP. Hey, look at JP made it. Um, yeah, our Wonelli days. Eugene Jarvis. Todd won this game actually at uh, the uh, Northwest show. That's my brother from another mother. I don't know if anybody else feels that we kind of look alike, but uh, <laughs> but Greg go minus. We even share a name, Greg. So um, that that's kind of strange. Uh, this is a classic picture. I love that. We, you know, a lot of there's Ed. Hey, how about that? 
this was when we were at the Texas show and we weren't supposed to talk about the next Elvira game, but we got forced into it. So that's me trying to keep my mouth shut. Tim does great voiceover work for years, worked on Elvira and House of Horrors. Um, yeah, fun stuff. I actually have autographed a head. There it is, happening in Germany. Um, you know, we get to go places. We get to go to Amsterdam. There's JP again, uh, Roger Sharp. And, uh, you know, we get to go to Belgium and drink beer. Um, you know, it's been great times. We, we get to go on photo shoots and video shoots. And Paul Chanankit uh, really did a great job on Elvira House of Horrors. And uh, forever indebted to him to keep me sane on this trip because there was a lot of uh, angst to say the least, uh, that's Waltz. If you're ever in LA, go to Waltz. That's a great place for pinball. Um, I said something funny here and people are laughing. So I don't know what was said, but it worked. Um, there's another team shot. Um, look at that. There it is. That was last year, just a year ago. Uh, Golden State with Ron Chan. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, this is, Good times. We learned that one of our vendors is a country and western singer, and he's pretty damn good. Um, some people thought when they saw this picture on the internet, they thought that the guy in the to the left of me is my bodyguard, <laughs> but it, it's it's actually Sebastian. So um, he's he's not a bodyguard, um, you know. And this is this was my uh, retirement party. Uh, these are these are the friends I've made over the years, you know. Uh, and and it, it's a great thing. Here's I an interesting picture. So this this is from 1984 when there was major layoffs at uh, Midway, Bally Midway. And uh, w after I looked at this picture, uh, we went out for uh, a lunch, um, and and literally the people on the left of the line are the people that stayed, and the people that were on the right of the line got laid off. It was a horrible layoff. Uh, it was it was it was horrible times for everybody, but uh, and, and when you're the remaining people that are left after a layoff, it sucks. I, I you know excuse my French, but it sucks. Uh, and there's the world's largest tombstone, uh, the Bally Pinball Division in Bensonville, um, with some of the employees outside. Uh, this shirt is bullshit. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I do what I want, when I want, where I want. Nope. No, doesn't happen. Uh, and this is me on the road. I found this really cool, uh, you know, whatever that thing is, with uh, a cool, uh, you know, illustration on it. And that's it. My brain hurts. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So if there's any, do we have time for questions? We have time for questions. So let's get these in. Two, only two? All right. Let's go right there. I've been dying to ask this since you posted the photos. Um, did you have to pose in the photos, like, for the art, for the machines, or was that for just funsies? Huh? Uh, both. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it depended on the game, but uh, sometimes it was just for fun. Uh, other times it was definitely for the game, for the artwork. And would would you like a prize? You would? All right. You don't have to take it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Revenge from Mars, is that corn on the, like, aliens? Yes, it is. Uh, Corn Man from Mars is a long story, uh, but it's a Pat McMahon story, so it's worth telling. Um, Doug Watson did the original Attack from Mars. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. And, and Pat being the leprechaun that he is, uh, had a whiteboard in the art department that he'd um, sometimes do very scathing uh, caricatures of employees. Boy, did he ever. 
And uh, we, we always had fun. People would literally come to work in the morning and to see what was the new creation on the whiteboard. They'd sit there with their coffee and laugh. And, and Pat did an amazing job. So Pat noticed on Attack from Mars, he goes, hey, doesn't, don't the pectorals of those Martians kind of look like corn? And I said, yeah, a little bit. But I took it to extreme on Revenge from Mars and definitely made them kernels of corn. So, uh, and even on the backlash, there's a girl that's shopping, and everything in her shopping bag is corn related. So, thank you, Doug, I guess. Uh, it's an homage. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who gets the head? Would you like one or no? You don't have to take it. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. For being the inspiration for Corn Man <laughs> from Mars, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. All right, one, any one final question. One more? It's a two-part question, Greg. Um, what is your, what do you feel is your best piece of artwork you've done in your career? And number two, it's a tough one, I know, because yeah. you've done so many really good ones. Right. The second part of the question is, what is the game you had most fun doing artwork on? Wow, that's a good question. Okay, so best, I can't say, because they're like children. You know, I can't, I can't play favorites. You know what the worst one is. Um, and uh, I would say my last game was my best game. So that's going to be, you know, that's going to live with me for a while now, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so Elvira House of Horrors, you know, because it was the last game I worked on, uh, the last game I touched practically. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And the most fun was probably um, Dr. Dude because it was like nothing and then it became a whole world. So uh, it was a lot of work. But um, thanks for asking. You, did you want a prize? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, thanks, Tom. By the way, my son-in-law put one of those in the back window of his truck, and he drives around with it everywhere. So if you see a truck with my face in it, it's him. So anyway, one more? Work on the uh, baseball uh, game the, with the, you know, the running man unit in it. Uh, that guy right there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he did. For the, for the record, that's the actually, that's how, that's how Greg and I met up was because of Dennis, because I was working with Dennis on that True. stuff. So. Yeah. I wish I had more time because there's so many people that uh, I've had, you know, either in my life, in my art life, in my career that I've either mentored or been, you know, they've, uh, they were a hire, you know, that I, and it's just, there's just no time to tell everybody how many people have influenced me and I've influenced in turn. And it's, it's just been a great career. So thanks for having me. Appreciate it.